Hey, everybody, and thanks for tuning in here to our second-to-last All Access Pass. Today, I'm very excited. We have a very special guest with us. Do me a favor, put those hands together. The lead singer of The Monkees, Mr. Mickey Dolenz. It's best when it's spontaneous like yeah, that, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm having a great cruise because the ship is steady. Smooth. I know yeah, this smooth. is. smooth. Gotta yeah. love that. It, it is we nice. We love that. Yeah. yeah. The, the motion of the ocean isn't the easiest thing to deal with if you're not used to it. Yeah. It, it, I've done a lot of cruises in my time, and uh, it, it can be ugly. <laughs> oh, it, it, it can get moving. I think we have oh, some... Yeah. We have some veteran cruisers out there in the crowd, I'm sure, and you've done a few cruises. You've probably been through some rocky motion, and it's not oh, easy. Oh, yeah. What's it like performing on stage when we're rocking and rolling? It, it's okay unless I forget I'm on a ship. Then I just think I'm really drunk or I'm like... Earthquake. <laughs> or I'm sick or something's wrong. And, and it's true because, you know, you're in the showroom, and you don't, you don't see any... There's no windows or stuff. You don't... And all of a sudden, you're doing this, and it's like, whoa, uh-oh. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with me? Then, oh, wait, I'm on a ship. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but I love it. I, I love, you know, the the whole cruising thing. I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know. It's a blast. Yeah, How many is. cruises do you think you've done in your career? How many cruises? Whoa. I know. I, I, I don't know. I'm, uh, I, I, did, I did Royal question. Caribbean. It's the parent country yep. here, par parent company. Um, I did Royal Caribbean for years, big ships, the big ones, and uh, it, and it was great. You know, it's a uh, uh, great uh, crew, great sure. uh, sound system, great orchestra. You know, it's like, and this one, I mean, I'm like, it's like amazing the the quality of the the food and the yeah, and it's beautiful. The, oh. Today I did the wine tasting. I learned that you don't drink this wine with that food and that wine with this thing in the value. And I realized why I love having Ripple with a Big Mac. Ah, yeah. The perfect pairing. It's the perfect pairing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the acid thing with the... Uh, with the with the seeds and the... <laughs> yeah, the bun and... The, the cheese, the thing, but with the, the ripple thing. and the... A little bit of thing. The Thunderbird. You know, well, yeah, that's the icing <laughs> on it, really. That just takes it over the top. You don't want to go over. <laughs> you don't want to take it too far, yeah. You, you can reach. Fireball. That's what kind of the limit there when you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're reaching that end. So I'm loving it. I'm, it's a beautiful ship, and it's uh, great people. You all have been so gracious and lovely, and I hope you guys are having a good time. We're having fun. <laughs> Don't forget, we're doing this next year. Yeah. We're coming back, 2017, yeah. already Absolutely. in the books. Absolutely. I heard you signed up. I did. <laughs> Going to fool them again. Uh, here we are. <laughs> uh, I've, okay, so let's, let's start with some fun, basic stuff. You were the lead singer, R, forgive me. You were originally signed as the lead singer of the Monkees. You were a drummer for the Monkees. And you didn't know how to play drums. Well, th that's not quite accurate. <laughs> um, it, it's close, but not, not quite accurate. The Monkees was a television show, <clears throat> not a group. It was uh, the cast of a television show. Uh, the closest thing since the Monkees that I've seen is like Glee, mm -hmm. where... It's this imaginary show about an imaginary glee club, but they can actually all do it. They yeah. can sing and act and dance and, and play and stuff. But this is, of course, in 1966, The Monkees was a television show about a group mm -hmm. that wanted to be the Beatles. But the, the group was sort of imaginary uh, on the TV show. We lived in this beach house in Malibu, mm -hmm. which begs the question of, since we were always out of work, how did we afford <laughs> a, a frickin' beach house in, in Malibu? Malibu. <laughs> we don't want to know or you go You don't there. get into that. Yep. But it was a set, and there was this. and So those monkeys on the TV show that we're all so familiar with were, to a degree, characters that were developed by the producers and by us and the writers, and they were portraying this out-of-work 
a rock and roll band that wanted to be famous. On the TV show, uh, those of you that have watched it, I'm sure, will, will remember, we were never famous on the TV show. We were always struggling mm -hmm. for success. And that, I think, is one of the smart things that the producers did is that was part of what they call the Bible. That was the narrative. <coughs> These are guys that are not famous. It's that struggle for success that I think is one of the reasons all the kids around the states and the world identified because sure. there were all these kids out there in their basements and their garages and they're you know, trying to become famous, trying to get a record, try, whatever. Um, then added to that was the fictional narrative of us saving the world or Davy's girlfriend or, you know, so these little... In that order. You know, uh, everybody compares the monkeys, of course, to the Beatles all the time. Um, but the more accurate comparison is the monkeys to the Marx Brothers. And, and it was John Lennon, the first one I ever heard that actually said that. He, before I even thought of it, he said the monkeys are like the Marx Brothers. <laughs> and uh, with a better accent. That was pretty good. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie to you. That was pretty strong. That was pretty strong. <laughs> but he was absolutely right. He, he, um, he nailed it. He got it. And when we started uh, rehearsing and working on the pilot and the, and the series, they screened Marx Brothers movies for us. And it was a lot, lot more like a Marx Brothers movie than, say, a Help or Hard Day's Night, which most people make the comparison to. Mm -hmm. But if you analyze it, uh, you, you, you find that it was a lot more like a Marx Brothers movie, a half hour mm -hmm. episode uh, uh, like a Marx Brothers movie. Running around, silly, singing, dancing, goofing, and not famous. On the Beatle movies, they were the Beatles. Sure. And famous. And, famous. and they were being chased, and they were, they were the Beatles, and they were famous, and they were huge, and it was... On the Monkey Show, we never, never were famous. You know, we were trying, struggling. So, uh, in answer, long answer to your question. What was my question? They cast me, huh? I, don't, I had a question in there somewhere. I don't know what happened again. <laughs> yeah, they cast us, but the audition process was uh, elaborate. I mean, it was much more than your normal TV audition at the time, and. Uh, you, you had to be able to act, obviously, do lines, scene study, uh, uh, and you had to be able to sing and play something. Uh, my audition piece was Johnny Be Good on the guitar, which is the story I tell in my show. And it's for real, because I played guitar at the time, uh, acoustic rhythm guitar. Uh, so you had to be able to do that to even get anywhere near the, the, the final auditions. Um, and then they cast the four of us for whatever reason. They just felt the, the, the four of us had the chemistry, had the this, the that, whatever, you know. And uh, then they said, after we did the pilot, uh, no, before we did the pilot, they said to me, and you're going to be the drummer. And I said, cool, where do I start? <laughs> where? where <laughs> Well, like you would do if you were cast sure. in a movie yeah. as a scuba diver. Yeah. <laughs> how do I learn to scuba dive? How do, yeah. yeah, great. And okay, you're starting Tuesday with scuba lessons, you know. And that's how I approached it. Now, now the other guys may not have, you know, uh, have that same take on it. I'm just speaking for myself. But I approached it because uh, that was not my first series. I'd already had a series, and they said you're going to write an elephant. And I said, Circus Boy. Okay. Yep, circus boy. circus boy. And yeah. And I remember saying, okay, well, where do I start? <laughs> where do I learn to ride an elephant? But I had I, I was a musician. I took uh, classical guitar. I was playing uh, Segovia mm -hmm. and Spanish sort of stuff. And uh, uh, when I was like 10, 10 or 12, I, I started, my father got me into playing uh, classical guitar. 
And then I w when I went to, got into high school and I would go to parties and I'd play Segovia, the girls would say, do you know any Kingston Trio? <laughs> yeah. So i like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> For the girls. By I the know next whatever. week. <laughs> yeah. By, I, it. Tying down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down. So I started getting into folk music, and then, of course, with Peter, Paul, and Mary, and the Kingston Trio, and Bob Dylan, uh, folk music. And then uh, rock and roll, and then Johnny Be Good, and, you know, stuff on the guitar. And um, so my audition piece was Johnny Be Good, and they said, you're going to be the drummer. But I could read music at the time, so it wasn't like I was starting totally sure. from scratch. And I'd been in rock and roll bands before, cover bands. And I'd played a little bit, you know, I, I, not, I, I would just sit behind the kit, you know, and, and kind of goof around. But I could read music, and so it wasn't like just totally starting from scratch. And I had months uh, to, uh, to learn, and I, I worked at it. I worked very hard to ride an elephant and to play the drums. <laughs> Got a great <coughs> uh, little side story. My first uh, professional appearance on stage was at Kennywood Park in Pittsburgh uh, on a press junket from, uh, 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 for the Circus Boy. And I was 10 or 11, and I was playing little songs on the guitar. Uh, I'm going to sit right down, write myself a letter. Purple people eater. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> bing bang, walla walla, bing bang, ding bee, ah, ah, ding dang, walla walla. And I was in my little circus boy outfit. It was a press junket and photos and the press were there. And they had a little band playing along with me. And then I finished my songs and the elephant came out, my pet elephant yeah. from the show, and did him. <laughs> so basically my first gig was opening for an elephant. You opened for an elephant, yeah. On that note, do not change the channel. Do not walk out of the room. We'll be back with more from Mr. Mickey Dolenz. Hey, thanks for not turning the channel. Here we are with more from the one and only Mickey Dolenz. Now, we, we talked a little bit about the early days there with a little bit about Circus Boy and a little bit about, uh, about the monkeys. Of course, then the monkeys in real life started to explode. Then you started to go on tour That's and... That's the interesting, uh, you know, sort of uh, dynamic of it. Uh, Mike Nesmith used to say it was like Pinocchio becoming a real little boy. Yeah, what a great analogy. And so in a way, there's like two monkey groups. One is the characters on the TV show. That never made it. That never made yeah. it. And we're <laughs> and running backwards. And, going <laughs> and then we started rehearsing. A lot, and, and we, a lot, and David Winters, a famous uh, choreographer, uh, actor, uh, started directing the show, and we started working on, obviously, our, our playing and our singing and the, and the stuff, and uh, we had to go out there and do it for real, you know, and I've always said it's like R Leonard Nimoy really becoming a Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like, <clears throat> all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> well, Mike and Peter were by far the most accomplished musicians. Uh, uh, Mike on guitar, Peter on bass and keyboards and horn. And Peter plays every instrument in the world. Uh, David would play some acoustic, do a lot of percussion, sing, of course. And I'm back there, you know, learning and, s and playing the drums and having to sing. Most of the leads, not leads all, but it. most of the leads back there behind the drums. And boy, that tempered us. I mean, that was like running the gauntlet. You know, it was that was the real deal. You know, sure. you couldn't hear anything, couldn't see anybody. You all you heard was screams and <laughs> and the music bouncing off the the back the wall. The screams, yeah. It, it, and it just it was it was tough. It was a lot of work. And what was it like? Because. Uh, I mean, you, you kind of related to, to it, 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 every year has their version of, let's call them boy bands, forgive the term, but every every generation has them. And what was it like being a part of that in terms of your relation to your audience, your relation to your, your fans? Well, at that time, we never interacted with fans. You couldn't. It was impossible. I mean, it was literally screaming, yelling, rushing, mob. <clears throat> so very seldom would we ever 
uh, interact. Yeah, that's why I don't go to the grocery store. It's very difficult <laughs> to understand. I get yeah, it's very hard for me. I it's Jason, Jason, and, and yeah. Jason, yeah. Oh, my <laughs> wife gets tired of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's usually because I'm tall and I you, get you, things off the you top. You pay her to yell at you yeah, and I do. scream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jason, Jason, act like I'm somebody important. Baby. <laughs> no, we couldn't. Uh, it was impossible. You know, uh, not so much in L.A. where we where we uh, were doing the TV show, but if we went on the road and sure. went out to other cities. The first time I remember um, actually uh, sort of uh, recognizing, uh, being aware of how popular and successful the show and, and, and the music had been, we were, I was at, we were in L.A., I lived in L.A., and we were filming the TV show uh, that summer of 66, it went on the air September 66. Uh, the, the record, Clarksville, uh, Last Train to Clarksville, uh, was already on the air and had become a big hit. And But we're still in, in, ensconced, uh, sort of incommunicado, filming the TV shows eight, ten hours a day, then going into the studio at night recording songs, singing, you know, going to sleep at midnight, getting up at seven for months. If the, the, no interaction. There was little or no. Uh, and in L.A., you know, uh, back then especially, they couldn't, no one could find you. you there's no TMZ. Yeah. Those idiots, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Bless their and little hearts. You know, you just went home. And, and you went home and you went to sleep and you got up and you got on the set at seven o'clock in the morning. And that was going on for months. So Christmas of 1966 rolls around, and we get a hiatus. We get a break, a one-week or two-week break. And I'm going to go up and see my family. There's my sister Coco over there. So uh, my family's up in San Jose, and I have a week off or two weeks or whatever for Christmas. And I get in my car, and I have my little Christmas list. And I go down. I drive down to the mall uh, in the valley, uh, L.A., in the San Fernando Valley, where I had shopped every year for years with my family, my parents, with Coco. I mean, you know, it was like my local mall. And I'm going to go down and do my Christmas shopping. And it's about the first time I'd been out of the house in like three or four months. Oops. And <clears throat> so I drive down there, and I pull up my, get in my car, and I go in, and I go through the big glass doors, and all of a sudden, everybody, I hear people screaming and running towards me. And I think it's a fire. <laughs> Turn and run the other yeah, way. Yeah, I did. And I'm holding the door open. I'm like, Come don't on. panic. Don't panic. Calm down. Don't run. It's, it's okay. <laughs> and, and There's then a I monkey loose. Go. Then, then I realize they're running at me. <laughs> and I had to run yeah. back to my car. I got my car. I had to leave. I got pissed off. I was like, hey, I can't do my, I had to send my roadie to do my shopping. I was going to say, you saved money. Sorry, guys, couldn't get you anything for Christmas this year. I can't even shop. I don't know what to tell you. Well, yes, yeah, so, I mean, the, 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 it's, a, it's a skyrocket, obviously. You know, and It was. It's, uh, it's meteoric, I guess, in a lot of ways, kind of how quickly that, I mean, 65, 66, and all, boom, it explodes. Now let's fast forward a little bit, and let's talk about Broadway. Oh. No. Oh. Yeah, I um, <clears throat> I got lucky. Uh, well, I, I was always a fan of uh, musicals mm -hmm. since I was a kid. Probably because my mom and dad, our mom and our mom and dad, uh, both were singer as singers. Uh, my mom had sang in the big band era. She'd done musicals in, in, in university when she was. They met. My parents met doing a play. My father sang light opera. And he did movies. Light where opera? Yeah. You, uh, it's like um, things like, i got to stand up. <coughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Some enchanted evening, you may see a stranger. If that's light, I don't want to see heavy. That's Except nicely done. Except he would sing it. Walking through the living room with his <laughs> boxer shorts, <laughs> and, and that like, adds a degree oh, of difficulty. Yeah, that's that is so gross. That's how you hit uh, the notes. But we, my uh, my sister and I, 
again, a uh, Coco there. We um we grew up listening to their albums. You know, they would have these albums, and I remember that uh, there was a couple in particular. One was Oklahoma, and Coco Very and cool. I can still sing every friggin' song in Oklahoma, <laughs> and um, a West Side Story, and and others. But we we just were into it just because of the singing, the acting, the thing, the thing. So we loved it from childhood, you know, six, eight, ten years old. Uh, later on, you know, uh, during the monkeys and stuff, uh, I, I remember being a fan of the genre, uh, uh, but I knew nothing about it. I had no clue. Uh, L.A. is a TV film sure. place. Capital of the world. Uh, it still is. I mean, there's very little theater and nothing like, obviously, like uh, New York or other parts mm -hmm. of the country or, or, or the world. But I remember always going, boy, I would, I'd love to do that. But I had no clue how, where, uh, who to call. I, just, I had no idea. Even though, having said that, The Monkees was a lot like a little musical theater thing mm -hmm. on television. Uh, and I realized this years later, like the Marx Brothers were musical theater on television, singing and dancing mm -hmm. and playing and laughing and a little plot, you know, that kind of got you through plot it. Plot gets yeah. in the way. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And so I, um, uh, it wasn't until uh, after the monkeys, totally, yeah, after the first thing I, I remember doing was a play, a musical with Davey in Sacramento in the round uh a version of Tom Sawyer. I don't remember anything about it, but it was a full-blown little, uh, uh, what do you call it, you know, um, a summer stock. Mm. Summer stock little sure. musical in Sacramento. And I remember I just loved it. I was just, you know, I, I felt I was in my element, but again, somebody had found me and cast me. And so then it was, um, uh, gosh, a few years later, I did something else. I uh, play and then I did some other little things and I did um, in the early 90s I did uh, some oh no I remember one of the big breaks was uh, Greece they cast me in Greece uh, the um, uh, the big New York Broadway version yeah and I uh, I was Sandy yeah wait <laughs> bit of a stretch I thought so. but but it's good, good range. Good, good range. range. Yeah, yeah, I got good range. You got chops. So I <laughs> no, I did Vince Fontaine, the sleazy disc jockey. Yeah. <laughs> Typecasting, what can I tell you? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I, uh, it was great fun. And um, a great show, small part. It wasn't a big part, but uh, uh, great fun. And I loved it. And I did it on Broadway. And I did the national tour for like six, six eight months. Aida was in there somewhere. Well, th that was a little bit later on, and that was huge. Aida was a big break because, A, Elton John, Tim Rice musical, and I was the villain. I was the bad guy. And so that was amazing. And doing these arias, and not arias, but like big vocal things, you know, and uh, all by myself. And it was scary. It was so friggin' scary. <laughs> and I remember people saying, how many shows you do a week? And I'm like, eight shows a week on Broadway. Yeah. And they said, oh, oh, my God, eight shows a week. And I'm like, I've done eight shows a week and traveled 400 miles yeah. in between. <laughs> Are you kidding me? And the other thing I figured out, I did Aida for about two years, best part of two years, the national tour in the Broadway show. Wonderful. And I, I was sitting in my dressing room one day, uh, totting up uh, all the performances I'd done, eight a week for, you know. And I worked out that I worked on Aida longer than I worked on the monkeys. Wow. That's kind of a cool statistic. That's kind of a fun realization probably for you at the same time. That's impressive. Don't turn the channel. Don't walk away. We're going to come back in just a few minutes for one more segment with the one and only Mr. Mickey Dolenz. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Jason, your host. And one more time, let's hear it for the fabulous Mr. Mickey Dolenz.
Now, Mickey, as you know, and as I've explained to you and every, of, uh, every one of you fabulous artists that I've had up here, I like to open things up to the audience. I like to break down our fourth wall here, and I allow our, our, our fabulous studio audience here to write some questions for you before uh -oh. we start. And I have a couple for you. I'm going to save this one, and you're, you're welcome, but I'll come back to this one in a minute. Uh, I'm going to start with, where is this one? When you worked with, uh, sorry, Pamela from Ohio, Pamela from Ohio wants to know, when you worked with the lions as a kid, you never looked scared. Why? I just drunk. Yeah, that's fair. That's how you make no, it. No, I, uh, I, I, that's a good question. You know, I actually asked myself that uh, years later. I, I was like, are you an idiot? What were you doing? But I guess, my, well, my parents, both my mom and dad were... Uh, very down home, very country. My, my father from Italy, my mom from Texas. We always had pets. We always had animals around. And I don't know. I just, I guess I just uh, was comfortable. You know, maybe it's inbred or something, you know. I, I just was a bit countrified or something. And sure. And so they said, you're going to ride an elephant. And I'm like, okay, where? Oh, hi, elephant. Yeah. And I remember that the... The uh, f photo that I think you're referring to is a, a very famous one now. Uh, they said, you're gonna, we're going to do some photos uh, out at World Jungle Compound in the valley uh, in Thousand Oaks. And they said, this is, uh, what was the, it was his name? It was uh, Nuba. Nuba the lion. It was the MGM lion. Oh, very cool. And I, I'm 10 years old, so I'm like, okay. And it was a friggin' lion. <laughs> it was Here, like kitty, right kitty, kitty. But even at 10, I could tell this is a really old lion. <laughs> <laughs> and this lion didn't even have, I don't think, any teeth anymore. It's a, it's a, it would have gummed me to death. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a, but uh, very low and slow. And it was, it was the original MGM lion. That's cool. And they said, okay, we're going to sit you on its back. And... And now I look back, and I know that there was some guy with a gun and a tran or a, tran a tranquilizer, tranquilizer yeah. dart or yeah. something. But I, I never had any problem with the animals except one time I got bit by my, my pet uh, chimpanzee, Bo Bobo. It was the same chimpanzee from Tarzan movies. Oh. That, again, by 1955, is really old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, and he had a dressing room. He was also a divas, bitch. Was like, divas, and diva, chimps and elephants, diva chimpanzee, the monk, the know. monk. Yeah, I, got I only want red bananas. You know, who has red bananas? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> demand. I had to ship them in from South Africa or something. You're a good um, man. But I remember once, and very friendly, and it was fun, and he was like, I had a really, you know, he was like play, uh, and I remember one morning I got on the set. And I saw the chimpanzee, and I ran over and to, to say hello and to pet it. And I guess I must have kind of freaked it out a little bit. And it, like, bit my finger. It was like, ah! you know, just to animal kind of, kind of thing. That's the only time I was ever, uh, ever, ever hurt at all. And it was nothing, a little, you know, thing on the it finger. It was a warning nip. It was yeah, just it a little was, warning. Yeah, it was just like, ah! How'd it sound? Yeah. Don't look at me. Don't look at me in the eyes. <laughs> The, I the had my most coffee. painful thing was riding the elephant if they hadn't shaved it. Because elephant hair, if you don't know, unless you've ridden an elephant, it is about the size of a pencil lead. Wow. Every hair. And it's all over. So when you ride it on the back, on the neck, uh, these if they don't, haven't shaved it, the little pencil <laughs> hairs are like a quarter of an inch and sure. a half an inch, and it's like... Whoa! That's like, and then I would say, "Can you shave the elephant?" And the uh, handler at the time uh, said, uh, "Sure." <laughs> he got out a blowtorch. <laughs> That's how you sh don't don't say, "Oh, the elephant doesn't even notice." The elephant is like, "Oh, that's warm. <laughs> I like that." Elephant skin is like that it's two to three inches thick of skin that has no no uh, nerves it's for protection from you know the 
Africa. <laughs> from blowtorches. From yeah. blowtorches, yeah. yeah. Over yeah. generations in evolution. <laughs> People <laughs> shaving them with blowtorches. I'd have so thick So the skin elephant, too. you couldn't have cared less. It would just be eating their hay, and he's that's the blowtorch, and he, he's shaving the elephant. Now who's the diva? <laughs> Somebody shave the elephant, please. <laughs> Eli from Detroit says, hey, could you mind talking for a moment about your first time actually meeting the Beatles? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, where's Eli? Eli, where Somewhere are you? Right there? in the middle. Yeah, I remember very clearly. It was uh, uh, a trip I did. I made to England uh, in 67, I think. I don't know. Um, uh, a press junket. It was it, we, uh, before the tour. We were going to tour, but they sent me ahead to do some press stuff. And somebody set up a monkey meets beetle uh, night, uh, uh, press op, their press people, I guess mine, and Paul McCartney invited me to his house in Maida Vale, uh, a beautiful uh, place he had there, and it was just us, just the two of us and a couple of press people, and we just sat and hang and had dinner and had wine and watched some silly B BBC TV and, 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 and chatted, just like hung out, and of course... I don't know what he thought about it. I'm like weeing my pants. I mean, I'm just yeah. like trying to be Pretty cool so moment. cool. <laughs> I had my autograph book. <laughs> <It's Yeah>. like, <laughs> uh, but I'm just trying to be so like, oh, yeah, man. Hey, what's happening, Paul? Oh, yeah. yeah. And he was incredibly gracious. And, you know, they got it. They got with the monkey thing. Even before I did, probably. They, they got about it being a show about a show about a yeah. so we just hung out and had a lovely time and over the years we've even reminisced about it um that's great and uh then he invited me to uh that famous uh one of the famous recording sessions for that album uh sergeant uh sergeant sergeant Peppers. sergeant, Pepper. sergeant uh, bilko bilko sergeant <laughs> sergeant pepper that was it whatever happened to that album it was just like that was so good, and just you never know. You never know. You win some, you lose some. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so I went to that. Uh, that well, that was the first session for Good Morning, Good Morning. That was the first one I remember going to uh, uh, one of the tracking sessions. And then over the years, yeah, I met uh, all um, everybody, and um, and like I say, John was the first one to say I like the mocks, brothers. And then uh, I spent most of my time, probably over the years, with uh, uh, Ringo, mm -hmm. uh, mostly, and Harry Nilsson, my old, my old dear friend. Yeah. Oh, I got a little less special, uh, little uh, announcement. Um, uh, I don't know how many of you have heard that we're recording a new album. Uh, <laughs> Peter and I, and Mike, and <coughs> and. We found some old tracks, multi-tracks from 66 or 7. Uh, tracks that had been recorded as demos or attempt, you know, the early stages of, of a record. But we never got around to doing them. They had like hundred of, hundreds, of, literally like dozens and dozens of these tracks that were never finished. Some just simple one. But there's a few we found um, uh, that were uh, multi-tracks, so we, you know. And there's one um, by uh, Harry Nilsson, wrote for me and for us, called Good Times, which he eventually recorded it. But we found the multi-tracks with Nesmith playing guitar and the Wrecking Crew playing some of the other parts. And I just went in the studio, and uh, I, I'm doing a duet with Harry on this... Uh, it's going to be cool. Very cool. We found a song ri uh, written by Neil Diamond called Love to Love that Davey sang. I'm singing with him. Perfect. Yeah. It's going to be good stuff. Keep, it's called Good Times. You, uh, keep your eyes out for it. Very cool. Joanne from Virginia, right in the front, right in the front, says, what, <laughs> what is your hidden talent that most people might not know about? Nothing I can talk about right now. <laughs> but I think probably some people here know about my uh, 
the business I have with my daughter. Uh, I have a daughter, uh, Georgia, in, you in LA, my youngest, huh? You have a few daughters. I have many. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have four, da four daughters. All girls. Hey. Dun -dun -dun hey. Here Dun -dun all week. Hey. Here all week. Uh, tip the veal. Try your waitress. Um, I, um, uh, I, I've always been into woodworking and shops and sh uh, shop work and machinery and, and stuff. Uh, many of you probably know I was going to be an architect before the monkeys. I was going to actually be an architect. But I, uh, I've always had a shop, always had machines and stuff. And my, my youngest, uh, Georgia, also knew how to use tools and stuff from university doing a theater degree, building sets. And one day we're sitting in the shop and I'm building a, a coffee table for a friend of hers. And um, I said, wouldn't it be cool to have a, a company called Dolan's and Daughters Fine Furniture? <laughs> and she just was like, oh, yeah. So we got a website and a shopping cart. and we, So we make stuff. And, and unless, you know, she has to put up on the site, we can't take any more orders because daddy's on tour. <laughs> daddy's on tour. All right, I, I have uh, two more, and these are both fun, and we're, we're not necessarily going to respond to the first one, but I think it's cute. Uh, Phyllis is here from New York. Phyllis is in the building. Uh, where are you at, Phyllis? Say hello. Yeah, Phyllis. Phyllis says, uh, hey, Mickey, your birthday's coming up just a few days away, I believe. Can I buy you a drink tonight? Wow. No problem. Never seen him say no to that. Don't worry, Phyllis. And, uh, and I think this is a great way to take this home, Mickey. Ingrid is joining us all the way from Chicago, and it's this gorgeous young lady right here in the front row. Mickey, tomorrow is my birthday. Would you be so kind as to give me a hug? Sure. Sure. Ingrid, Ingrid, come on yeah. over here and get a hug from Mickey. Happy birthday, my love. Happy birthday, darling. Happy birthday. Happy what birthday. What does that say? What's your shirt? Dolan's. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. That's no great. Uh, do me a favor. I want to thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you so much for sitting here in the live studio. I want to be a part of this right here. Once again, I'm your host, Jason. This is All Excess Pass. One more time, let's hear it for the fabulous Mickey Dolans. <laughs> 